So this is the wife's latest color scheme with the pillows. Have to say I like this better. Really wasn't a fan of the uh, multicolor thing she had going on. But she went ahead and moved all that into one of the guest rooms, which actually looks better in my opinion too. After eight, someone messaged me early this morning, said, I want all the coolers. I said, great. I got your name on it. They said they'd be here 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I'll tell you, I wish I, I wish I could get paid for waiting on people that say they're coming. <laughs> this is like my biggest pet peeve. People that not only don't do what they say they're going to do, but specifically people that are late. As a photographer, for those of you that don't know, that's my main business. It's really important to be on time. For a shoot, I'm there early. If I'm on time, something went wrong. If I'm early, that's normal. But man, clients that come to me late, that was that was my number one pet peeve of dealing with people here or at the old house when I did portrait photography and stuff like that. Especially if I had a busy schedule for that day. I would have to budget in a 30, sometimes an hour window between appointments just because the majority of people are always late. That's just how most people that I dealt with at least over the last 11 years of doing photography are. <laughs> I don't know if it's a Florida thing or what because I didn't do photography when I lived up in Michigan. But, you know, I worked for many years up in Michigan, and I just don't remember that being the norm up there, up north in general. So maybe it's a southern thing, maybe it's a Florida thing, maybe it's just around Tampa, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, around here, that is the norm. Eh, I'll get there when I get there. So if she ever does show up, I'm going to go try that barber at the next light down. I just saw a... Gen, uh, generic barbershop sign. So that's a better sign to me than the chain place. Definitely won't go to Great Clips again, but you can see that <laughs> that haircut didn't even last two weeks. It's just looking all over the place. Don't like it at all. Got to get it taken care of. Then hopefully all these stacks of coolers will be gone. And no, those aren't my only coolers. Some people were saying, you can't get rid of your coolers. What are you going to do for, you know, a herf and stuff like that. There are other coolers <laughs> that are in the garage that I'm keeping as generic coolers. They won't be used for cigars anymore. Just get rid of these three here. Those are in the best condition, so I can sell those. I want to get this uh, Calyx shelf in position. That's going to go over here under the window, get all of that cleaned up, and then I can transfer everything off that glass shelf, get that onto that, clear up the office, and move that shelf into the photography studio, and then finish setting that up, get everything off the floor in there, get things on the shelves, got some small bins to go in there, clean that room up. That's going to take probably the majority of the morning, especially if I go get a haircut, and I guess after that, we'll just start building again. I want to clean up some stuff on the outside. Hopefully it's not going to be super humid. It's been pretty bad the last couple days. I just didn't want to work outside much. But we'll see how today goes. I still have the hammock to build and a chair and a love seat. So there's definitely work to be done out back, but I would really like to get all of those boxes off the back porch for the next garbage night coming in, let's see, two more days. So that's the plan. I've already got some stacking up here in the hallway to get rid of. So we're plowing through stuff. Once I get that space cleared off, then I can tackle uh, the entertainment center. I still need to get up in the attic, kind of waiting to do that because there's a bunch of stuff I need to do. I want to do it all at once up there. But for the theater setup, I need to run the rear surround wires. Oh, I forgot to order the wall units for the wire looms to come through. So I need to look into that. Uh, I can just get them at Lowe's, but uh, 
once I get up there and verify everything's good to go and I see what I need to do, I'll run all that and then I can set up the theater. And let's see, build the living room. That'll be the last bit of the build. Just kind of thinking my plan here, getting everything in sequence. Still have to do things in order because just of, you know, stuff's taking up space in certain rooms. After that's done, then it's smart home time. Then I'm going to have some fun. Still a couple days worth of work there. A lot of electrical work. I got to replace something like 25 switches and outlets and stuff like that. But that will be really cool. I can set up my hubs, my Ikea lighting. Still have to install that in the kitchen. But I'm, again, waiting to do that because I need... The first thing in place is the Samsung hub. Get that connected into my, I won't say her name, but my <laughs> ecosystem here. And I'm gonna build that out in stages. So I'll do the physical install, then I have to figure out what I wanna do with it. That's probably gonna be the most interesting part is how I wanna tie all the smart home stuff together. But that'll be fun. I'm figuring about a week of work left. And I still need to get rid of the bins. There's still people messaging me. In fact, right now, a guy just asked if they're still available. But everyone so far, except that one person, has flaked on the bins. But I really like to get rid of those. All right. Coolers are gone. Another 80 bucks in the pocket. And I'm going to go ahead and give away this rolling laptop stand. I used it in my studio for back when I did a lot of uh, tethered photography, generally with people. And... I needed a computer to actually tether the camera to because back in the day didn't have any kind of wireless communications for for example seeing the shot on an external screen or I would pipe it into the TV into the living room but haven't done that in many years and don't need this at all in the new studio so it's got to go and while I'm giving stuff away I thought I might as well try to get rid of these parking blocks for free put them up all in the general area I usually have pretty good luck giving free stuff away as long as it's in good condition. If it's in you know, relatively high demand, I can usually get rid of stuff the same day. So we'll see. And I can just sweep this up. I believe I do have some of this matching patio paint. You know, if not, I bet the semi cloth from the bathroom would be a pretty close match just in color. I don't really care if it's as durable. This is where basically the nose of her car is going to go. I just don't want it to look like that. I'll just seal it up. Got my sealer ready. This is just a lot of loose cement and dirt from when they drilled the holes for the rebar. And that will take care of that. I'm really sick of tripping over these things, but they are just massively heavy. A good 50 pounds at least each. All right, let's give big league haircuts a shot. Oh man, did I find my new barber. Mile and a half down the road, experienced barber, just like my old one, except they also give a back massage and it's a dollar cheaper. <laughs> really good. Good results too, digging it. Have I ever told you how much I hate running wires? Oh my God. Okay, barely, barely got the 25 foot coax to fit. Got the uh, modem tucked in under there. Nothing's plugged in yet. Still just running cable after cable. Just about done. Got it running behind everything. Gonna have to tuck everything back up into place. Ethernet can go back this way. It got all tangled behind the fridge coils and power cords behind this monster. That was fun. Got that finally disconnected. I'm gonna move this stuff off, get it out of here, and should be good to go. And then I'll be able to set up the rest of my security cameras and get those back online. That's better. Got everything blocked into place. Now I need to figure out what to do with my flight controls. My old desk, I had a, well, one of those to the left and I have the shelf unit to the right and everything's tied in. I've got a USB port switch underneath there. And when I wanted to use them, I just turn them both on, 
and they just plunk back into place. I had the wires routed through the desk. Obviously, I don't have that kind of setup here. So I imagine they're both going to kind of sit over there on those little ledges. Unless I get something to put under the desk. Not sure. But it won't be neat and tidy like it was at the old place. But that's okay. I've got plenty of cable. And uh, I'll just have to move them when I need them. But I think right now I can go ahead and tackle this project and get rid of this huge cable. I thought getting rid of the original going to the single was good. The original had three cords all bundled together and they went to a single. But now I've got the wireless kit. So it'll just pair down to this and a small little add-on unit. Yep, that's the next step. So we have the actual wireless adapter here with its battery pack that you just wear on your belt or put it in your pocket. And then because I have the Vive Pro, this additional little interface unit, just because it's a different physical interface to the uh, main unit from the wireless. So the way this wireless adapter works is, what it has to do is replace this cable, which is a combination of audio coming from the computer to the headset into the built-in headphones, a ton of data to drive the two beyond HD displays. It's almost like running two 4K screens in one unit. So there is a ton of video data being pumped to this and it's at 90 Hertz. Your TV's running at typically 60. So it's like running three televisions worth of HD data. It's a lot of data. Plus you have telemetrics running back and forth through a third channel. So there's a lot of bandwidth going to and from your headset. Now remember when I said smart homes use a bunch of different wireless protocols, well, this uses another one. This actually gives you a separate network card. So it does require you to have a little bit of space in your PC. And then it gives you a very directional antenna. This is a separate Wi-Fi, well, not Wi-Fi, but wireless antenna for its own network. And this is extremely high speed, but extremely short range. Remember, that's the trade-off with networks. The higher the speed, the lower the range. And this is only good for like, I think the rating is like 15, 20 feet maximum, something like that. Ideally, you want to be under 15 feet. So you mount this up high, like on top of your monitor, somewhere on top of your PC, somewhere in direct field view. You have to have no obstructions between this and your head. And then this is the receiving antenna that goes on top of your headset on the back. It's very light, I have to say. It weighs almost nothing, it's just plastic. And it sits back here, and this is a receiving antenna. So that has to see that. And that is wired into your computer on its own network. And that's what gives you the barely enough bandwidth to run the Vive Pro. My new power adapters just came in. They give you 360 adjustable heads here so you can plug it in any way you need to, and then the other end has three outlets, and it's just a short one foot cord. So you can wrap it up, fold it, do whatever you have to do. Uh, I'm gonna use the first one here in the kitchen for the Alexa, oops, sorry, said her name again. Ooh, good, she didn't pick it up. I think I need to move this away. I've got this situated in a little different spot here, and it doesn't seem to be quite picking my voice up. Might be hitting an echo, maybe up on that shelf would be a better spot for it. Anyway, I'll be plugging in the one in the kitchen and the Ikea lights and maybe the hub. I'm not sure where it's going to go in the kitchen up underneath the cabinet. So this will be perfect in there, especially since I'll be changing the outlet in there to black. So here's the first one I want to use this on. This is why I wanted this specific combo. I wanted a swivel head so that I can have the cable go up, down, sideways, wherever I need to. And I'm gonna be plugging multiple devices into it. I don't wanna take up and use all of the outlets. I still want this available here in case I wanna put something on the counter and plug into it. And I don't want the cable running up to the top of the cabinet here. So let's go ahead and get this mounted. This is yet a, another case of running into one project while trying to do another. 
I want to mount this, and I'm gonna mount it on its side just using 3M double-sided tape, to the underside of the cabinet. Just have the cable running up flat. You won't even really see it. But I don't know exactly where I need to stick this on the cabinet until I get the light installed. The light I know is gonna be pretty far up, but I don't know if there's gonna be any kind of wires interfering. So I don't wanna stick this in place until I have the light in place and then I can tidy everything up. And now I can't even remember if I wanted the Alexa over there or over here. I was gonna put one over here and the Google Wi-Fi on the other. Was I gonna put the Google Wi-Fi over here? I can't remember at all. I'm losing it. I'll do the card install later. Definitely not in any hurry to do that or set the rest of the computer up. But this is the transmitter they give you and they want you to mount it on the top of your monitor, kind of like a old school webcam. And they just give you this cheesy webcam like mount. And it's just a light spring. You're supposed to drape it down the back of your monitor and hook it over the front and then it mounts on top. But I have a curved monitor and this isn't the right size or shape so even if I wanted to put it up there like that, it doesn't stay. I'll have to probably get a little wall mount. It's got a standard uh, thread for light stand, tripod, speaker mounts, that kind of thing. Just like I did with the lighthouses up there. So I'll just do something like that and screw into the wall just above the monitor. That'll work. Actually better would be up on the wall back in the corner. You want it to have the best field of view, and I do use some things like Elite Dangerous sitting here at the desk, so I do need it far back. I can't, for example, put it on the front of my PC because it wouldn't hit me sitting right here, no matter where I angled it. So that would probably be best. It's not a super long cord. It's only, a, looks like a six foot cord, so it's not long enough to even stretch over to there, but I can get it up to here. I tried to see if it would reach the lighthouse and just, you know, piggyback it with that. That would work too, but it's not long enough to drape down and hide the cable, but it's barely long enough to drape down kind of like that power cord there. So I could go along that and just straight up. That would work. We'll see. Well, that was an awkward install. Lots of parts to replace. I actually went back to the stock pad because it turns out that uh, aftermarket pad, where'd it go? I already put it up. Uh, was too thin on the sides and I was getting light leaks. It's much more important to have a dark display than a close display. So, unfortunately, that's okay. The stock one is at least very comfortable. There's no problem with it. Uh, the other thing I didn't like about the thinner one was I felt the bridge in my nose. It was just slightly touching and and giving a little bit of pressure. Of course, everybody's gonna be different with the size of their nose, but I don't like any kind of pressure on my nose while I'm playing. I don't want any kind of pressure point. So here we go. The device just kind of hangs here. Short cable replaces the long one. So this takes the place of being tethered to the PC. Really can't feel it on your head at all. Not at all. Um, it's a lot lighter feeling overall because you don't have the old cable kind of hanging down. You felt that at all times. And now that's completely gone. And the, the little bit of weight here is much less than the force that was there just from that cable dangling. Now the power pack I've just got charging up here and it just plugs in right there. And like I said, you just put that in your pocket or on a belt or your pants or whatever. And it's good for several hours. And they do have replacement batteries, it just slides in and out of this little belt pack here in case you uh, you know have multiple people that are playing all day or you just want to go all day or whatever I can go for about two hours is my max before I got to take a break just for my eyes it just starts to get a little tiring I never have a problem sweating luckily because I keep my room nice and cool but I know a lot of people that keep the room you know 80 plus definitely have a sweating problem they they do have aftermarket little fans that can blow on your forehead. I guess it makes a good difference. They get really good reviews, but that's it. There's a completed top of the line Vive Pro, at least for now.
whatever they come out with next, I'll probably give it a shot. All right, let's keep going with the room. Making progress, making progress. Found uh, the rest of my office stuff, <laughs> more cables, more stuff to organize. Um, not moving this out of here quite yet. I went ahead and installed the card in the PC, got that set up and running. I'll go to Walmart later and get them out for that, just so that's done and out of the way. Ran the setup software, updated the firmware, confirmed it works with the headset, that's all good. So this is the little setup that I like to use, and this holds all the stuff that charges via USB, and there's a ton of stuff that I charge via USB between all the GoPros and the Gobos, or, or the gimbals, headsets, um, batteries, I mean, tons of stuff. So this is like my recharge tray where everything just gets dumped, keeps it all nice and neat in one manageable pile here. I got uh, a couple of my uh, Arlo cameras recharging and I'll get those all mounted up, the rest of them up on the house tonight, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> so just kind of figure out what I'm gonna do here. I like to use a mouse pad for setting stuff down on and I'll probably just uh, keep my controllers in there. I had some nice hooks on the end of the shelf unit here but that's when it was sitting next to the computer. Don't really need that anymore. Everything's going to tuck out of the way once I get everything plugged in and set in place. Just about there. So I think definitely by the end of tonight I'll have the office completely clear and set up. I'm going to go ahead and actually rewire the desk, get the sound system wired in, and just be done with this room and just concentrate on this for the rest of the day. But right now it is dinner time, so break time. I have a feeling somebody has tinkered with the wiring of this light. Because I've only got one outlet over there, it's only half of it, that's controlled by one of the switches. This does absolutely nothing in the room. None of the, none of the other outlets are switched, and it obviously doesn't do anything to the light. That's the only thing I can think of that this other switch would be tied to. There's no other outlets. I mean, there's no reason to have two different switched outlets in an office like this. It's a small room. None of them are flipped and none of them switch on or off at all with the switch. So I guess when I'm up in the attic, I will venture over here and see what I can see. I'm sure it's not too difficult to wire back the way it should be, hopefully. <laughs> but I want it into the switch so I can tie it into the smart home system. Otherwise, I've got to buy a special fan unit, which is more expensive than just a Caseta switch. Got a full complement of things charging. Guess uh, it's been a little while, but this worked out. I put my hooks here on the side of the cabinet so I can charge them while I store them. And that's looking pretty good. But this is the snarl of stuff that just generally lives here. And you can see I, I can't even have everything plugged in at once. That's a nice 10 bank uh, high amp USB charger. It's not a, a switch or a hub, it's just for charging. So it works out really great, especially while traveling. I can just plug that into an outlet in the hotel and not have to worry, I can recharge everything at once. All my batteries, cameras, backpacks, remote, external battery charger everything all at once so it's really cool okay making progress i'm gonna call it a night though got a ton of stuff put away in the cabinet there i was working on some stuff in the studio started to wire more on the desk uh got everything out of here got my wire tacked down from my vr sensor up there and that's pretty much how it's gonna look. It's fine. The other one is behind the cabinet, so you don't even see it. I'll go to Walmart tomorrow, get the center mount for the new high-speed adapter, and that should do it. All right, see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Sometimes the simplest answer is the best one. Double-sided tape. Bada-bing, bada-boom.